Animating line graphs is great because done well, it can create suspense. Now using the simple feature, which should be used in moderation, we can demonstrate changing values over time. In this video, we're going to cover the second type of animation, which is the animation of a visualization itself. Now, uh, you can do a lot of things with the animation in Tableau. And in fact, animations not necessarily the best word for it because animation just implies things are moving but in tableau you can actually make things cycle right for example you could cycle it across different fields you can apply it to have the inputs changing there's all sorts of creative things you can do but as beginners what i tend to get asked a lot and i actually don't recall being asked anything else is if i have a line chart can i animate it going that's that's really all they ask so we're going to stick to that first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, make a line chart so let's bring in the delivery fee and let's bring a time in here so we got date and time double click and i and i want more than year because otherwise it's just going to go boop and boop so it's not much of an animation so let's go in here and i'm going to switch to continuous uh week for example so we had a bit, a bit of granularity here, quite a number of points. And what I wanted to do is kind of plot this line as you go along. So how do we do that? Well, we use this pages section right here. And what we want to do is we want to tell the pages section, what do we actually want to animate? In this case, it's actually time we're going to animate. So what we do is we bring this uh, date field into pages. So let's do that. So if I bring this in here, the default is going to be year. And what's going to happen is when I press play on this, you know, on this button, instead of uh, um, visualizing each individual point, okay, it's going to do on a year level. So it's going to go 2019, and then it's going to show everything for 2020, like instantly, which we don't want. We want it to plot individual points. So you can match this week with uh, uh, in here. So we simply do the same thing. We go in here, we set this to continuous. So this second section again is the continuous. This one is the discrete. And we're gonna set this to week number. Okay, there you have it. Okay, week number, I think that should be fine. And what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna bring this animation just in between here, just to make it a little bit easier to use. So the way we do that is we grab the title and we just slide it until we get that really dark line and we put it in there and we're gonna make it a little bit longer and it just makes it easier to kind of control. Um, I'm gonna show you a few of the options that we have here, uh, but the first thing I'm going to mention, and this is super important, cause I remember the first time I did this video, which was like two months ago, uh, I was building something. I kept getting a bug of the animation and it wouldn't work. And I spent like an hour trying to make a five minute video. It was a nightmare. And what happened was it would do one point and then it would just freeze. And the reason for that is if you go into format and you go into animations, if this is set to on, it, it seems to conflict with this animation. So make sure that if you have animations on this page, it is set to off. All right, so we have off here. Okay. So then what we do is we're going to just press play. So here we have the play button and we're just going to press play. And you're going to see it's actually plotting the dots. The speed is actually controlled with these three buttons here. So the last one being the fastest. So let's slow it down a bit. Okay. Uh, hang on. Let's bring this back a bit. Okay. Let's press play. So you can see it plotting you know, nicely there. I'm going to make the dot just a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, there you have it. So it's plotting along. Okay, no worries, no problem. Um, the issue with this is it's not really showing me the line. So we want to bring in the trail. Okay, so you got to do a few things in order to make this happen. Um, and I personally don't like the fact that it takes this many steps to just bring the line in. So what we do is we go here to the show history section. We click on that and that activates the, um, these settings right here. We're going to set this to all. Okay. There you go. And straight away, you can see that these have turned to dots. Okay, cool. That means we can see everything behind it. The problem is it's still not aligned, right? And we need this trail setting to become available. So what we do is we go here to the marks card and we set this to circle. Why it's set to circle, I have no idea, right? It's very confusing. I'm just going to make the dots a little bit more manageable. There you have it. 
I'm going to go back into the show history and you can see trails is now available. If I do that, it converts it to a line. Okay. I really don't like the fact that you have to pick circle and then go trails. It's, it seems very counterintuitive. In fact, this should be called line. But for some reason, when you set it to line, it doesn't work. I don't know why. But this is why you're here. So I make the mistakes and waste my time trying to figure out these really weird things so you don't have to. That's why I'm here. Okay. So let's set this back to circle. Um, let's go back to show history. I can also show the dots and the line if I wanted to. But I tend to think that's overkill. So we go trails. We can set the... Um, so if it's set to marks, we can also set the fade. Right? How far back it fades. Okay? It just depends what you want. Um, or you can just leave it on trails. All right? You can also format the line. Let's say I got three, you know, dashes. Or, you know, if I wanted to change the color or the thickness, I can do that as well. So we just leave it as a straight line for now. Okay. So we click outside of that. Let's move this back. Or I can click here. Go back to the beginning and I can press play again and now we have a line so this is what I tend to see with um, most people when they do a animation and this you can already do heaps so you can kind of think of yourself like presenting it's like all right then we had a bump here and what you'll notice in a second guys is we kind of leveled off and then a few crazy things happen you can see you'll see a spike come up in a second and then it kind of like adds to your story. It's also like, uh, you know, some presentations can be a, a bit dry. So by adding that animation, you know, it, it gives people something to focus on, especially if they're long presentations. Okay. And that is it. That's how you do animations. And I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.